I have a confession. This version um, that you're seeing right now is a version of Ping Jun in the past. Okay, that's right. This is not actually happening live. Um, and this is recorded just about an hour ago before um, you guys came on. And as Marcus was um, about you know, doing that call, um, I wanted to record this video so that this is something that you guys are going to remember for a long time to come. What is the lesson? Which is automating something by showing you that I'm automating it. And yes, so this is actually pre-recorded. And right now, this version of Ping Jun that you're seeing, I'm not over here right now, like literally, as you're watching this, this very second, I'm probably having dinner right now um, while giggling to myself, lurking somewhere in this Zoom room. So look around Zoom, okay? I might be here, I might not be here. <laughs> so recently, I was doing a coaching call, or rather, I had to do a coaching call, but there was a problem. I needed to be somewhere else and I couldn't fulfill this coaching call. So one of the things I thought was, what if I taught Hello there. my community how to automate a call by literally automating that call? A little bit meta. So what I did was, without them knowing, is I pre-recorded it and in front of me was literally just a bunch of static faces, just like what you're seeing right now. And today, you're gonna to be taking a look at behind the scenes to what it is that I did in order to automate that entire call without anybody in the room even knowing that it was completely automated. So I was there, I was asking questions, regardless of their response, I would be responding. And today, you're gonna to be able to see exactly how you can do that as well. So whether you want to automate a coaching call, whether you want to automate a webinar, whether you want to automate a live event, technology has made it all really possible and it is so advanced that there's really no way to tell if something is truly live. So let's begin. So today's session is a very special session. Wait, somebody is saying uh, there's no sound. Guys, let's do a sound check real quick. Um, if there's sound, just type in number one. If there's no sound, just type in number two. Okay, one, 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 one. Okay, looks like it's it's you. No, it's not us. Okay. Um, ironic thing is anyway. So it's all good. It's all good. All right. It's a very interesting session because today I wanted to do the hot seats. But I had a change of heart. And the reason why I had a change of heart is I wanted to, this, this specific thing happened. And I believe that teaching these three principles today is going to be way more powerful, important, and fun, as well as funny uh, for you guys here today. And today I want to be able to show you these three things um, and to s show you what number one is, okay? Okay, number one, the first thing I want to be able to show you guys today um, was a realization that I had lately. I mean, I've got a lot of videos that I love from these guys. But this video right here, right? If we treated teachers like pro athletes, you know, um, I find this video funny and sad at the same time. Because while it's funny, this is really like the sad truth of how society is. And what do I mean by that? Well, it's this, right? It's like, if you think about teachers who play such a huge role in society, right? Transferring knowledge from one generation to another, teachers aren't paid anywhere near how much our entertainers, comedians, athletes, singers, rappers, right, performers, nowhere near how much they're paid, right? And if you think about what are all these guys doing, the one thing that they're all doing is they are entertaining people, right? People will pay a whole lot more for entertainment. People will pay $1,000 for an epic weekend with, without even thinking twice, right, for a concert ticket. 
But a thousand dollars on content on personal development? Are you crazy? Now, what does that have to do with this first point? <laughs> Everything, right? So number one, um, I wanted to teach you to think about how can you merge these two things together, right? Entertainment and education, which is, or inf information and entertainment, right? Or sometimes known as infotainment. Why? It is because if we can entertain our audience by starting off a conversation that gets their attention to begin with, that is when we can add value to them and get that point across and teach them the dry, boring, technical stuff because that's when we have their attention. Okay, now, first of all, why did I want to, why do I want to begin with this topic? Here's why. Because I couldn't find a slot for this topic. I can't cover this on the hot seats. I can't cover this topic on implementation hour because it's, it's not something that you will do together with me, right? It's not something that is what's working right now because it's, this thing is timeless. So I kept thinking, man, I, I want to be able to bring this slice up, but I've never been able to do so. So that's why I wanted to utilize um, and begin with that, okay? So infotainment. Now, whatever topic you might be in or industry or niche, it's all about thinking, well, how do we still utilize entertainment or something that gets their attention, whether it's drama, gossip, humor, something that's current, something that's controversial, to utilize that as part of our content so that we can feed our audience this thing that gets their attention so that they now they care about this topic and our ability to reach them and engage with them and talk to them is a whole lot higher. Now, at the same time, you think about like your favorite teachers, the ones who made you care about that subject, that made you excited about it. Let me tell you one of my favorite teachers, okay? One of my favorite teachers was my history teacher and his name was Mr. Diva, okay? Uh, and Mr. Diva, one of the things he would teach, you know, in our syllabus is when uh, Malaysia during the Japanese occupation, okay? And until today, I remember that an organization during that Japanese or or occupation was called MPAJA. Now, that is a really random thing for me to remember. But do you know why I remember it? It is because during one session, Mr. Daiva came in in a Japanese army uniform. <laughs> and I remember when he came in, the feeling, you know, how old was I? That was like 13 years old, right? As a 13-year-old kid, you see this guy walk in, right? When all other teachers are like, what are they doing? Well, teachers are literally, right? Bringing their textbook, all right, class, right? Um, go ahead, turn over to page. Now, what if that is you? What if right now you could have a really boring topic like the Japanese occupation back in the early 90s, right? Um, and wait, it's not an early 90s. Well, as you guys can see, I don't have my, um, it was like 945-ish, right? So what if you can do that through information and entertainment? So. Here's how I think about infotainment. Now, there are a lot of different layers to this. I think I can do a whole three-day event on just infotainment. But this is a good starting point to think about, okay? So number one, um, goes without saying, okay, I'll, I'll give you like the breakdown, okay? Number one is, or number one, under infotainment, I would say is like your personality okay personality so if you take a look at like all of us here right we all have our own unique personality and trait and that is what makes us unique right? i know it sounds cheesy everybody's like oh be yourself but 
what I mean by that is that I believe that our audience wants to see us for being us. That means includes everything. Includes the, the crazy side, right? Everybody show me your crazy eyes, right? Like the crazy side. Next one is, can I utilize infotainment through something that is current, right? So, so what would be current? This is what could be like some sort of gossip, drama, controversy, right? Because that's what makes people want to click. So can I utilize infotainment based on something that's current so that people care about this thing that they otherwise might not necessarily, you know, care about? How many of you here know what options trading is? Okay, just type in, type in one if you do, uh, two if you don't. One if you do, two if you don't. Okay, one if you do, two if you don't. Okay, I'm getting a mix of ones, one, two, 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 one, one. Okay, so we, we got this. Okay, so now in most cases, if you came from the angle of, you know, here's what stock options are and here's why you should care. In, in most cases, people, you're not going to get their attention, right? However, imagine if it came from something that's current, right? So for example, it means um, coming from the angle of how to uh, generate crazy returns from scam coins, from poo-poo coins, okay? Now, first of all, that would be a pattern interrupt, right? Everybody would be like, right? Wait, what? Next one. Now, I could keep going. Um, let, let me give you one more slice, okay? Another thing that I think about when it comes to, like, infotainment is I think about play on words, okay? Please write down play on words. If you want to be able to make your stuff more entertaining, funny, humorous, a great way is to utilize play on words on your titles, on your emails, on your, your headlines, right? As the attention grabber. So a great way to think about play on words is just to Google famous sayings in fill in the blanks, right? In personal development, mindset, attitude, whatever it might be, okay? So um, for example, uh, a famous saying would be, I believe this would be a biblical reference, would be like a wolf in sheep's clothing, right? So if I wanted to utilize that phrase, in my titles, in my emails, rather than utilizing that phrase exactly, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change it a little bit. It would be like a newbie in guru's clothing. Now, the reason why I believe this is powerful is because when a person reads it, it's kind of like those things like, if you know, you know, right? A person may not necessarily get it because they might not know the original quote, but if they do, they feel smart for getting it. And that was one of the things that my dad told me. He said, the secret to this is when you write it, and he said, when I wrote that slogan, I knew like 100% we were going to win it. As long as the person appreciated the play on words, right? So quotes is the same thing, right? You're, you're, if it's a play on words and quotes, if the reader understands the original reference, what's going to happen is they feel smart. It's like, I feel smart because I got it and not everybody might get it. So it's like one of those things like, if you know, you know, right? And if they get it, that's when they're going to appreciate it more. And that's infotainment as well. Number two is, and before I reveal to you, number two is, mm, when I was thinking about doing this call, one of the things that I wanted to show you guys is how to streamline and automate and think about removing yourself in, in, in processes and systems as much as possible, okay? And one of the things I wanted to show you guys is how to you can um, automate stuff. I have a confession. This version... Um, that you're seeing right now is a version of Ping Jun in the past. Okay, 
That's right. This is not actually happening live. Um, and this is recorded just about an hour ago before um, you guys came on. And as Marcus was um, about you know doing a call, um, I wanted to record this video so that this is something that you guys are going to remember for a long time to come. What is the lesson? Which is automating something by showing you that I'm automating it. And yes, so this is actually pre-recorded. And right now, this version of Ping Jun that you're seeing, I'm not over here right now. Like literally, as you're watching this, this very second, I'm probably having dinner right now um, while giggling to myself, lurking somewhere in this Zoom room. So look around Zoom, okay? I might be here, I might not be here. Number two, first of all, is automation. Okay, now I'm trying to link all these three things together, okay? So in order for me to teach automation, notice what I'm doing right now. In order for me to teach automation, I'm using infotainment, right, to teach this. And I ask myself, if this event, if this call here today, was just me doing my normal thing, right, which is like, oh, you know, welcome everybody, today I'm gonna teach you automation. Automation is this and this and this. Would it be good? Yeah, probably just like all of the other calls, right? But guess what? I know that a month from now, three months from now, six months from now, maybe even three years from now, 10 years from now, you will look back and say, man, I remember that one session when Peng Jun taught me about automation and automation of events and automation of calls and automation of anything, where he literally automated a call to show me the power of automation, right? How many of you would find it pretty funny, right? And by the way, if you're raising your hand, note that I can't actually see your hand raised. If you guys don't know, uh, here's what I'm really seeing, okay? So all you guys that's watching this right now, uh, these are all just static faces of screenshots um, of random faces um, that I asked my team to put here. So next piece is, um, how many of you here would love to be able to discover how to think about automation, right? Show events, right? Again, I can't actually see your hands, but thank you for participating anyway. Okay, this is uh, really funny. Um, I can tell you right now, um, even though you probably can't see me, but I'm in the room right now, in the Zoom room, right, giggling to myself. It's like, this is such a funny, <laughs> this is such a funny call. Uh, guys, I've been doing this for five years. Um, <laughs> I have never I mean, taught a session like that before. And I think it was pretty interesting when I thought about this, I was like, man, this is such a brilliant idea. Or um, it could have been absolutely horrible. I don't know. Um, the, the, the point I'm trying to make is that this is what you need to be thinking in your market, right? You gotta utilize infotainment. I'm trying to, guys, notice what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to make this session as interesting as possible in order to teach this specific topic um, by, by utilizing infotainment. Some of you are probably saying, you know, so how does this work? Well, we'll talk about that, you know, it's simple software. Um, but basically, like for challenges, you'll notice that if you've ever been part of our videos challenge, pretty much everything is automated, right? The daily posts the um, uh, that goes onto the Facebook group, um, even at the daily challenges, right? The scripts each day, the tasks, that's all um, automated. So in terms of the how, so you're probably thinking about how, so we just utilize this software called OBS. Um, how it works from a tactical standpoint, I have no idea. I know that you gotta switch on the software and you gotta feed in that video. I'm pretty sure it's straightforward, but it sounds scary. So I'll ask the team to um, have the training, right? If you wanna be able to stream any type of video live into like Zoom or Facebook group. Um, again, how many of you uh, would love to be able to have that resource added to our members area? Type in a big fat yes in the chat, right? So in order to teach you systems and process, what I did was I started with infotainment, then teaching you the different levels and different ways to start thinking about infotainment which then we pivoted into automation where in order to make this point, I have to teach this thing first so that you guys appreciate this point, right? To see that it's all automated. But what I'm truly working on at the highest level, and, and this is gonna be crucial for like next year and beyond, um, is for those of you like, as we come to this, the, the, the end of the year, okay? Um, I know that 
this year for some of you guys, maybe you're just starting out, some of you, you've been absolutely crushing it. You've managed to hit your goals. You managed to generate your first five figure months, your first six figure annually, right? You guys have been seeing the, 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 the posts uh, in the groups. And your next level of growth that you want to be thinking about um, is always, please write this down, okay? It's always removing yourself from, from the business. Okay, removing yourself from a business. And you gotta be very clear about what elements in your business you wanna be involved in and what are the different elements that you don't wanna touch. Well, I hope you enjoyed the behind the scenes to this coaching call. If you enjoyed this video, let me know in the comments below what your biggest takeaway is. And as always, be sure to smash the like button. It does help the channel out a little bit and to subscribe to this channel if you want to be notified of future videos just like this one. Now, some of you asking me, how can I be part of this process? How can I ask you questions? How can I have you coach me or mentor me? Um, we want to make sure that we are working with the people that's the right fit. You'll need to fill up a form. There's a link right below this video. Somebody on my team might give you a call to interview you to see if they're right fit for each other. And if you want to apply and see if you're a good fit, then all you need to do is click on this link in the description box below and my team will be in touch with you.